Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful things happening within the Blender Foundation, Blender community, and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of things that you guys we probably want to take a look at first off blender 2.83.10 has been released and this is a long-term support and for those that are working with the blender 2.83 for their project you can now simply download the 10 build that is available and this comes with nine bug fixes now you can get this on either snap steam or on the windows store now for those who are also you know wondering if they can get multiple versions of blender on steam yes you can so you can get the 2.83.10 lts or you will be able to get the 2.91 and start working with this depending on your preference so with this let's take a look at some of the improvements and updates that are now available in blender 2.92 with blender 2.92 alpha open if you simply click on the logo icon right here and go over to about blender you'd notice that this is what you know about blender looks like right now as they seem to be going for something that is more bold and solid compared to what we have in previous versions which was just this so with this out of the way let's also take a look at some things that they are implementing for the outliner so if you actually go over to the outliner right now and you hover you notice that once you hover across all of these things they simply light up and I know some persons would be like, no, they've always lit up. No, that isn't true because if you also do that here, you notice that they don't light up at all. So there is no highlights on the icons once you move around them. But with the brand new version of Blender 2.92, once you go around them, they simply light up. Now, this one might be a bit confusing for a couple of you guys, but I'll try as much as possible to make it extremely easy. All right. So if you click right here, you know that this actually takes you to the property of what you're clicking so for example if you click on this right here you're going over to your modifiers and of course you can transfer this modifier to any part now there's a very tiny thing that is happening with blender just around this part if i simply click on the lights and go over and click on the camera text it takes me over to the properties of just the camera so if i do that you notice i'm there now if i jump back and click on the plane it takes me over to you know where i have my data properties but look at what happens if you click right over here this actually takes you to the transform so if i click here it takes me to the transform properties and automatically anything you click simply shows you the transform properties of the object so this is you know it's uh i don't know if i would say it's something awesome or you know if there is something in between but it just works and it's cool and i think it's something that you guys need to know there is a two edge sort of sword behavior that's happening here so if you click on this you go over to your object properties and now if you click on the text you can go over to the properties of your light if you click on the text you can go over to the properties of your camera but if you click on this one and click on the text you know you go over to your transform properties and this is something you just simply need to be aware of so while we're looking at this right now there is also an invert option for visibility selectables and every other thing so if you simply turn off lights and stuff like this the idea for this button is to invert things but up until this point it seems to be a bit broken because if we click on mesh and then we want to invert the visible options it simply means that every other thing needs to be hidden and only mesh needs to be turned on but once we hit this button everything simply disappears now i think probably this is going to be something that will be fixed later in time but up until this point it is actually something that doesn't really work as much so with this said there is also some improvement that has to do with the shading so if we simply click right here and let's add a brand new you know material to this you would notice that the principal bsdf now has a brand new color and by the way this doesn't just exist only here because if you switch from here and go over to your shaders and zoom right in you get to notice that and i think this is highly highly influenced by the fact that we have the geometry nodes coming and if you also take a look at what we have before so let's take a look at that you notice it's toned green if you click right here and switch these over to shader you would notice that it's green so i think this is actually something that has to do with you know the involvement of the geometry nodes that's coming so probably these are for distinguishing different shaders so you can actually tell what shader and what you know node that you're playing with at a given time and with this out of the way let's talk about the new implementation of aovs 
and also the crypto math directly in EV. Now, for those who would like to see or read more about crypto math and see the whole C-graph presentation about it, there's going to be a link in the description where you can access the PDF and read about it. And if you would like to see that implementation right here in Blender, of course, we're going to do a much more extensive video about it, but I have to show you guys what it looks like just in case. Now, this is something that's been implemented in cycles for a while now. So how you can work with this is fairly, fairly simple. Now, if you take a look at what you have here, if we go over to the shading and let's just simply look at this, click right here, you notice that we have the data, the light, and also the generals. Now within the shader AOV, you notice we just have a simple AOV. By default, once you download Blender, you don't see this. So how do you create yours? How you can create yours is extremely simple. Go over to where you have your render passes, scroll all the way down, and all of these are passes by the way, which you can turn on. So scroll all the way down. Now for your shader AOV, you can click on the plus button, to add a shader AOV. Now that is how you can add this. So you can add as much as you want. And one thing which I've come to find out is you can define or you can give a definite name to any of this AOV. So for example, we can call this base color. So let's just call this base color. And we can also double click right here, call this emission and we can you know add as much as we want now depending on how much aovs that you add if you click on this button down here you can go and take a look at this now how does this work so we have a very small scene setup right here which i would like to use to show you guys what it looks like so right here i have this very same thing so if i click right here go down you notice i have you know base color specular aov and also emission so how this works is you know simple you need to create an aov node and then you need to attach a color or texture to this. Now, why do you attach this? So you can simply take a look at what that base color or you know what you have whenever you switch to base color. So why you can see that we have our HDR having that checker is because within the world we have this. And if we simply switch this from world to object, you can also notice that we have a brick like uh, thingy going on here. So you can do the same thing for various parts and if you simply want colors, you can only use colors to define this. And speaking about colors, this is where your crypto mats comes in. So for that of crypto mats, if you go over to where we have our render passes, so let's simply switch these back to combine. So if we simply go all the way to where we have our render passes right now and scroll down, you would notice that we have the crypto mat. Now, if you turn on the crypto mat, you can switch this either based of object, material, or assets. Now, you will not be able to see this crypto mat unless you finally render your object. Now, there's also some things which I felt I was going to be seeing with this update, which I think is going to be implemented later. Within the levels, you can set the levels of object that will be distinguished uniquely based off the amount of you know assets that you have, or materials that you have, or objects that you have. Now, it's very interesting to note that we have several objects so we've set this by six and we also have several materials and we've also set this by six of course you can do this with any of them that you want to work with but then once you go over and hit the render button and let's simply render this to take a look at what we have you would notice that once it renders if you click right here you would notice we get the base which is the base all right so you can add colors and use these colors to define things when you are about to do your composition or you can work with the crypto map. And if you click right here and go over to your compositor and simply turn on use nodes, you will be able to now work with either the base, the mission, AOV, or specular. And for those who like to also work with a crypto map, you can also work with a crypto object as we have object one, two, and three. And this is definitely something that you might find fulfilling working with. Now, speaking about things that you might find fulfilling working with, there is a very cool update that I think you guys need to know. And this is from the folks at NVIDIA. So if you have a GPU, you can actually take advantage of the optics denoiser that exists in Blender. But up until now, optics regularly had issues. And one of the major issues that you have with optics is the fact that it did not support ambient occlusion and bevel shaders. So if you're working with a bevel shader, there is no way you'll be able to work with the optics, the noiser, either within your viewport or within your rendering. And the only way you can get past this is by simply switching your render, you know, your cycles render device from optics to CUDA. That way you can get something better. But other than that, 
if you're sticking with the optics and you want that denoiser to happen you will definitely end up with something like this and this is actually something that they've managed to fix for blender 2.92 the present alpha that's available so just in case you want to work with optics you would get the most out of it so there's a very cool update that is now available here in terms of the grease pencil so we have grease pencil ready to rumble and if we switch from here and switch over to where we have our draw we can now do some drawing now with grease pencil simply open if we switch over to the pen if i go in there and make a drawing and i choose to make another drawing like this you notice you know these are two separate pieces and they just simply work and this is how grease pencil regularly recognize stroke but right now there is a brand new auto match feature that now exists here so if you click on this auto match and you make that first drawing and this actually merges by distance so if i'm within a distance like so and make a second drawing you would notice that it sort of tries to see how it is going to merge this and it just simply does a very good job at doing that so i can now also stay from a different distance and make some drawing and because we have this turned on you can start noticing that this actually finds a way of connecting your drawing and while we're looking at things that you might try the vertex color now has the reset vertex color operator for the grease pencil so what do i mean by default you can just go in there and start painting your grease and you know do things like this and we can get this lovely looking thing going now if you like to reset this previously we might probably go in there and wipe this out but right now if you go over to where you have your paints you can simply click on reset versus color and this will reset everything back there is a very tiny button right here which you can use to make some changes if you like to just reset the stroke or if you like to reset the fill. so depending on what you like to work with this will definitely work perfect for you and for those who like to sculpt directly in blender right now there's a very cool filter for enhancing your displacement so we've talked about how you can work with this you know stuff before but i think pablo is going really really hard on these things and he's trying as much as possible to see that they actually come to life so how do you find that if you simply switch over to your scope mode click right here where you have your mesh filter you'll find this within the drop down where you have your enhanced details and also erase displacement now while we're looking at this we already talked about the fact that Pablo is also working on the painting. So I think we covered this one sometime last week or last two weeks, where we said you can now do the whole oil painting thingy directly here in Blender. Now you don't get to see this because you have to paint this as a vertex. So we switch over to vertex, and right now you can do some very cool painting right here. Of course, you don't really get to see that until you switch right here, scroll all the way down, and right now you can see that there is a very cool thickness and mixed color shading which you can now switch so if you like to switch this you can now easily click on this button to switch back and forth and this is very very lovely to see this improvement so for those who like to play with this or experiment with these cool features you can simply download a fresh copy of blender right now and start playing with this now while we're looking at things that you like to work with there is a very cool blog that the folks at the blender studio or the blender cloud have put together now this is more like a blog to showcase the production logs of things that they're doing in terms of the sprite fright animation that is going on right now so if you like to follow up with the sprite fright you want to see what is happening you probably want to see how they work with the hair and see some experimental particle hair rigging that is going on you may want to come through take a look at this and see what you can get out of it Meanwhile, Sprite Fright had an entire edition just simply dedicated to it from the folks at 3D World Magazine. And before we go, the folks at AMD have also made an add-on. Now, this is the USD Hydra add-on for Blender. So it simply means that you can now ship your USD stuff by simply using the Hydra Delegate add-on that is now available for Blender and you can use that right here now this add-on is for free so if you would like to grab this one as well and you probably want to play with the usd hydro add-on for blender you would simply find the link in the description and grab this and start working with it tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace